Welcome. Uh, announcements today. The Lenten Bible study continues this Thursday. We only got two left. We shift into the good news portion this time of Ezekiel. So we'll be doing Ezekiel 33 to 39 this week. Uh, Easter egg hunt there, uh, April 16th, 10 a.m. Uh, if you have any donations or whatever, see Karen or myself. Uh, there's an Easter sunrise service being held at the Galesburg Cemetery. Uh, that's going to be held by Pastor Whitney from the Galesburg UCC Church. So if you would like to jo go there and join them, you are welcome. Uh, we will be having a breakfast that morning at 9.30 also. <clears throat> and then don't forget that uh, the week after that is Stump the Pastor Sunday. So if you have questions you'd like me to answer during that time... Get them to me by Easter Sunday, if you can, at the latest. Do we have any other announcements? Oh, do we have birthdays or anniversaries? Just jump right into it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless. All right, then let's join together in our gathering hymn number 617, and I come with joy. I come with joy to meet my Lord, forgiven, loved, and free, in awe and wonder to recall his life laid down for me. Down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all are fed the new community of love in Christ communion bread. In Christ communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division ends the love. Made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends, and thus with joy we meet our Lord, his presence always near, is in such friendship better known. We see and praise him here, we see and praise him here. Together met to Together bound, we'll go our different ways, and as his people in the world, we'll live and speak his praise, we'll live and speak his praise. Peace be with you. Come and see the love God has given us. Come and see what it means to be children of God. Come with this hope that Christ's presence is real. With joy we come to see the Lord. And let's join in our call to worship him, number 162. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. 
Have any joys or concerns today? Tom? Yeah, I have a joy. <clears throat> Roger came and picked me up the other day and took me in for my injections in my back and brought me home. And in doing so, he, uh, I uh, wanted to pay him for his services. <laughs> Oh, good. All right, let's be in a time of prayer. We pray for the church and its leaders that in worship and witness all people come to know the extravagant grace poured out in Jesus Christ. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the creation and all living things that we may be granted wisdom to honor and protect that which you create. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the world's leaders and international aid organizations, that money, food, and other resources gathered are used wisely with good stewardship and distributed to all in need. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the sorrowful, the sick, and all in need of your healing touch. Anoint them with your spirit and grant them wholeness. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all the baptized and all that you call your children, O God, that marked by your love and your name they may serve others. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints 
who have gone on before us. And we pray that your promise revealed, promise revealed to them sustain us until we join them at the river of life. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers and all that we have failed to ask, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who restores us to life and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join in our prayer hymn number 129, Give to the Winds Thy Fears. Our scripture reading today is a continuation from last week, uh, Luke chapter 15, the second half of uh, verse 20 through 32. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly, bring out the best robe, robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf, kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. And he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, look, for so many years I have been serving you and I have never neglected a command of yours. And yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours come, comes home, he who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you kill the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. The word of God for the people of God. 
Will you please join with me in the prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One thing I uh, enjoy about this parable is uh, how much it reveals our personal and group tendency for judging others. Uh, We enjoy relating, at least to ourselves, the Father's generosity because, hey, you know, it's... We're good kids. But really, we're a lot like the older son. And it it really is deeply entrenched in us. And it's very hard. It's one of those things that it's... You know, even as I write sermons like these, I'm like, man, I might as well just be preaching to myself on this one. Because I find myself doing similar things in this. And so I, I should at least let you know that ahead that this is, you know equally for me as it is for anybody else who might hear it. So last week we had the younger son who went off. He came to himself. He came home. Dad is celebrating, right? And the older son is angry. And he takes it out on his dad, but he's, his anger is really directed at the younger son. He doesn't even call him my brother. He said, but when this son of yours came, and it actually takes his dad later on to go, no, no, this brother of yours was dead, right? So it's like, not even my brother anymore. And that is actually the first step in justifying our judgment of others. That person has nothing to do with me. They're not like me. In fact, their behavior makes them less than me. And so we create separate categories. Me and him. Me and her. Us and them. And that opens the door for any condemnation we want. As though there are only ever two categories of people in this world, right? I mean, we do that. uh, Christian, non-Christian, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. As though there are only ever two categories. If there is anything, really anything we should all be drawing from this conversation around the LGBTQ plus community. It's that people are standing up and going, there are more than two categories of people in this world. And the older son's anger is not really as much about his father's generosity as as it is about his own belief that the younger son doesn't deserve it. He's not worthy. Does the older son believe that the younger son shouldn't get anything from the father? That's kind of hard to tell. But he certainly doesn't believe he deserves a party with a fatted calf. And dancing and celebration which is one of those things that, you know, when I, when I read this, I had, this is one of the things like, how do you hear dancing? <laughs> but anyway, there must have been a lot of stomping going on. And, and, you know, here's that 
his, his brother comes home, he gets the fatted calf and everybody's celebrating and dancing and he looks at his dad and he goes, you don't even give me a goat so I can have a little soiree with my friends. Which makes me wonder, did you ever ask? Or did you expect dad to just go, here, have a goat, go have fun? Which sounds odd when I put it that way. I should anyway. Which brings us to the second line of thinking that I always reflect on with, this, with the brother, and that's the idea of scarcity. The idea that there's only so much to go around, and one person's gain is my loss. Whether it's food, or property, or money. And even though the father looks at the older son and says, everything I have is yours. Which it is, because the younger son already took his inheritance. So everything that's left belongs to the younger son, or the older son. Everything I have is yours. And it's like the older son is saying, everything minus the calf, the food, the money you spent on the party... Now there's less for me. His, the older brother doesn't care that another human being, his brother, is safe now. What he sees is his wealth being devoured, just like his father's was by the younger son. Which is, you know, because they're having a party. They're eating. They're devouring. I think it's just clever. Sorry. But, yeah. And dad's party is actually a lesson to both sons. To the youngest son, or the younger son who has just begun to live. I love that phrase. By the, he, has, he says, for this brother of yours was dead and he has begun to live. So he's just starting this whole process again. The youngest son or younger son learns appropriate generosity as compared to a wasteful life. And the older son learns that there are more important things like, oh, I don't know, people? Human beings who have been rescued from death and poverty and starvation or whatever pit they've fallen into by accident or by design. Which is, I think, what really gets us if we think that people did it to themselves. And we, we just use surface things to determine that information. I, um, one of the churches I served, we would have a, um, a vegetable stand, a free vegetable stand giveaway. There were, like, I think two rules. One was on, take only what you'll eat this week because we'll be back next week. And the other was, if you can afford to donate, please do. Just know that everything that's donated, we're going to go to a farm stand, buy more, so we have more for the next week. And somebody came up, and they had their Mercedes, and they took some vegetables, and they didn't donate any money, and there was some grumbling about that. And I, and I looked, and I went, you know what? You have no idea what's going on in that person's life. He could have just, he could have been laid off a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. You get laid off, it doesn't change the car that's in your driveway or the clothes that are in your closet. You have no idea what situation has come upon this person. So whether it's by accident or design that people get into the situations they're in, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have all made bad decisions in our life. Yes? Maybe we've been lucky that our bad decisions haven't gotten us in a heap of trouble. But some people aren't that lucky. And it doesn't matter. What matters is that they've had a change of heart, they've, that there's a return, that they've climbed out of the pit and they've made the journey home.
In another section uh, in the Gospel of John, Jesus is quoted, when he quotes Deuteronomy, he says, the poor will always be with us. And I don't think that's by God's design. I think that's because of our mindset, but that there's never enough. And so we hoard and keep and defend and protect. In fact, that section of Deuteronomy that Jesus is quoting actually says that the, the, while there will always be poor, we should always be generous. There will always be someone who has fallen on hard times. Again, whether by circumstances beyond their, their control or by their own actions. But those things don't matter. They really don't. It doesn't make them less than us. If anything, it just makes us luckier than them. What matters is that there actually is enough to help them. And plenty more for you and for me and for everybody else. But until we break the scarcity mindset, we're never going to get out of that pit. Until we learn that, we're all just going to continue being the older son in this story. He gave himself up. Jesus sat with his disciples. And he blessed the bread. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth food from the earth. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. When the supper was ended, he took the cup and he blessed it. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth fruit from the vine. And he gave it to his disciples, all of them, no distinction made for what they had done or what they were about to do. He said, take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, and remember. Let us pray. God in heaven, there is something about us that loves our categories. In, out, us, them. Help us to break from this. Help all of us to realize there is just in us. That none of us go through this world alone and none of us have no influence on our world. Let this suffer help us, open us to a love and a forgiveness like yours. And so we ask, O oh God, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Amen. The table is set. All, everyone is welcome at the table of the Lord. Come, eat, drink, and remember.
Let's join together in our closing hymn, number 640, Take Our Bread. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are Jesus Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God the Father. 
knowing that there is enough for all of us, for we are all God's children and all brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you.